4x4 Channel TV. As always, I'm Becky. We were recently filming at the Les Commas Land Rover party and managed to catch up with the G4 Owners Club. If you're a Land Rover fan or not sure what the G4 challenge entails, here are some of the facts about the cars and competition. Hi, we're here with Eamon, G4 Chairman. So Eamon, tell me, what is the G4? Right. So G4 stands for the four continents, the great four okay. continents. And where it came from is that Land Rover, after the demise of the Camel Trophy event uh, in early 2000, they invented a new marketing um, ploy, which okay. was the G4 challenge. It's the challenge between the four continents. Now, what does that mean? So, in every continent, Land Rover has a presence with this dealership. What they did was they gave this competition out, which was the national selections in those continents um, for an event um, that included not just driving, but mountaineering, biking, kayaking, oh, okay. so running, it's all round. It's all round. Um, and that differs from the Camel Trophy. Um, so the G4 Challenge took over from the Camel Trophy, because what Land Rover wanted was something that attracted the new public. The adventurer. The adventurer. I mean, their, their, their tagline is go beyond. Mm. And they want to sell cars. At the end of the day, millions of pounds spent on these cars is advertising. It's all about the market. Yeah. So, so, national selections were held in 2003, the first competition, in, in, and that lasted about 12 months. Um, and the winner was a Belgian fighter pilot called Rudy Turner. Okay. <laughs> so that shows you, you know, they need stamina, they need intelligence, driving skills, everything. So anyone can participate, providing they feel that they're up to the challenge. That's right. So when the competition opened out in, in all the regions, um, there was a media coverage, people applied to join, um, and there were, there were selections locally, and then the final two people from each of the region's countries mm -hmm. and came together uh, in Britain for the ultimate competition. And they also went around different parts of the world. There was various stages. In 2003, um, which was the first event, and that went, or it started in the US, in New York, it was a kickoff, and it went around all over the world, like South America and Australia. And the 2006 challenge, um, which was the next one, so it was every three, so every three years. years. Okay. Um, that, that went to, let's see now, to Laos, uh, to Thailand, um, and back to Bolivia in South America. So a lot of the pictures you see that they've got down there are from Salt Lake, South Bolivia. So, and the 2009 challenge was cancelled. Oh. Now, why was it cancelled? Because um, Ford Motor Company sold down the Land Rover to Tata, an Indian big yeah. And they said, well, we don't want to spend millions of pounds in this when the market's going down the So they cancelled it. So what you see here, cars from 2003 event, 2006 event, and also the cancelled 2009 event, okay, for the registration place. Yeah. So there's a mixture of cars here. Um, so that's where the G4 challenge came about, following on from the Camel Trophy. So will there be, when's your next challenge? When's the next title to be claimed? So the, the Land Rover fraternity are asking that same question, but the Land Rover won't tell us whether they will happen at all. So what is your website where people can keep an eye on what you're doing? So it, it, it's called www.g4challengeownersclub.com. Yeah. Owners Challenge Club, yeah. that's been it. And you'll have all your events on things on there? We do, we've got all the information and also we're finding when people buy a car and then another club, they do a search D4 challenge, you'll find our club come up. And so there are details for people how to join, how to look after their cars, and put some kit back in the right, you know, the, the right technical specifications and all that. So. so how many G4s are actually produced per year? Well, the, it only happened in 2003, in 2003 and how many six. Actual vehicles? So for 2003, from memory, certain so right, it, it was around about 200. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, but but lot spread of, out. Yes, that's okay. right, all over the world. Um, and they were produced in Land Rover's factory and so and then sent around to the dealerships around the world. Um, so that's why they're very special. Each car has got a history. 
Oh, it's oh, been. So every car can actually be traced? Every car can be traced. We have got the Land Rover's database yes. for the VIN numbers, for the registration numbers from cars everywhere. So they've given us to keep uh, for prosperity, which is excellent. Oh, you never want to dent one, then would you? No! <laughs> yeah, that's right, so we're very careful what we yeah. do here. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's lovely then. Hopefully we'll keep an eye on you next year. Great. I'll catch up with you. Good to see you. Thanks a lot, Ellen. Thanks. this for just over three years now. It's uh, been a, a pride and joy of mine now for three years. When I first purchased the vehicle, it didn't have any of the kits on it that you see now. Uh, there was no roof rack, none of the decals, and somebody had stripped it of all its gear. So it's been a really, really long, hard trek to get all this gear back onto it. So only in the last eight months has it finally taken its true form back to its original spec. Um, we have got lots of the gear now back into the club and lots of contacts in the club so if anybody else is out there trying to find the gear for the, their car then come and see us because we do have access to people that know people that have this gear. It works. It does, yeah. So how did you know it was a G, an original G4? Uh, the the colour was the main thing. <laughs> you don't ever find an orange Range Rover. There weren't many of these ever made. Now we were up to, there were 30 originally made. From what I understand there were 10 left hand drive and 20 right hand drive. From knowledge as well, two of those have been written off and one has been resprayed white. So Ooh. this is becoming extra rare now. Uh, the, the car itself obviously is orange and it does stand out. And that was one of the things that drew myself and my wife to this vehicle. It was a bit of a, a hard sort of sell to her because she wanted a Defender or a, a Discovery and I wanted a Range Rover. So we compromised on a G4, as you would do. Uh, and then uh, from there, we contacted the owner's club once purchasing and then discovered a whole host of information that led us to understand that this vehicle was very rare and then pushed us down the path to recovery and restoration of this vehicle. It's been a labour of love then? A very big labour of love, yes. Uh, following, following that, once you start the orange addiction, and I'm sure if you talk to any other members, orange addiction or orangeitis, or orangeitis as it's sometimes called, it takes over. Then you start getting a bike and a tent and all those other things which are really, really hard to find. And then you need to go and speak to your bank manager all over again. <laughs> to start funding this habit. It's, it's worse than a, uh, a drug addiction, I think. So uh, no, here we are with lots of kit and having now traveled 900 miles to here to the party, it's absolutely fantastic. I can't wait to do another trip again now. 
Have you managed to take this out on the tracks? We have took it out, yes, we did take it out yesterday. Did a few red tracks with it, um, following a defender that got stuck and this baby, God bless her. Absolutely no problem at all. Blitzed every single course that we went on yesterday, so fantastic. Has it got a name? No, I don't have a name Just for her. it, unfortunately. Just her, yes. <laughs> and you found a bike that actually belongs to this? Uh, yes, the, the bike here, the Kona bike, they are quite rare. Uh, it came up on eBay only about six weeks ago and I purchased it then. Never ever seen one on eBay before and that's the point where you need to speak to your bank manager because you just have to bid silly to get the to get the product. Did they know what they were selling? They did and it was listed at one of those times of days Come where on. not many people are watching and or you've forgotten about it, so winner, yes. <laughs> Uh, and then we'll be getting a leak, so I understand there's a kayak. There is a kayak. Uh, this particular vehicle took part in the Sydney Harbour stage in Australia. So as it is now, it doesn't have a winch. Some of the G4 Range Rovers did have winches, but this never had a winch. Um, it didn't have a kayak and technically it didn't have a bike with it. Um, it's good to have the bike. My wife has the G4 110, so the bike should actually go with that. But hers never had a, uh, a kayak either because it was a support vehicle, so it carried spare parts and media people. So you've actually got two G4s? Two G4s, unfortunately, yes, for my sins. If, if one, one Land Rover on the road is not enough to keep running, we've <laughs> bitten the bullet and got two. <laughs> but you love them, you're converted. I love them, converted completely. This will never leave my company. <laughs> As I say to him, bury me in it. Yes, exactly that, exactly that. <laughs> but it's been lovely talking to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Cheers now, thank you.